Ed, you're in a unique position going around London and the whole of the UK with your new ViewBook company. We'll come on to that in a different video. What things have you learned in the last two years that have opened your eyes to a state agency and letting agency that you didn't know before? Um, well, I've certainly had my eyes opened, that's for sure. Um, I've been living in a London bubble for almost 40 years, and I think that the people who exist in central London tend to be... I, I, I don't know how to put this so it sounds easy, but, but a lot of people would think that the agents in London are, are the best and that they're... But I think what's actually happened is because there was uh, a lot more money in London agency, you, you tended to often get the nicest people, if I put it like that, in yeah. London. Um, but what I didn't get at all was uh, a feel for what was happening. And having gone out and about, it's been really quite uh, frightening in some ways seeing exactly what's happening out there in the, in the rest of the country. Um, seeing the, you know, the threat, not the threat, but the way people are reacting to the online um, issue, and obviously that's changed dramatically. Um, you know, three or four years ago, more than that even, seven or eight years ago, I was an arch, I was really anti the online sector. I said, no, the, the bit agents do is vital. The 80% agents do from when the offer is agreed to exchange the contracts is vital. But actually, technology is, biting, is, is eating into that. And I think a lot of agents out there genuinely, genuinely want to feel that they, they have to do something to react to that, but they don't know how to. So going around, it's been rather terrifying seeing how agents are to a large extent left on their own to fight these sort of battles. It's very, you know, 80% of estate agents are, for one expression, people like me, uh, middle-aged men who own companies who don't understand. They're very small, one to two offices. Mm -hmm. Reacting to what's going on around them is very, very difficult. And what do you think they should do differently to, to ensure that they survive and even thrive going forward? Well, I think likening doing anything with estate agents has always been likened to herding cats because you're, you're, you know, estate agents tend to be on real old-fashioned entrepreneurs. They don't do anything if they feel they're going to lose money or they're, they're, they're worried about their brand or they don't want to be taken advantage of. And I think for, for a lot of them, getting together to do things. I mean, for instance, On The Market was a classic example. It was, it was an effort to try and get people together to sort of take control of their data and, and their spending. But quite rightly, a lot of people felt, well, you know, we don't trust this. It's happened before. It's happened with right move. Uh, you know, we don't know what to do. So getting agents together, if, you, if you're an independent agent and you want to get together to, to try something new with some of your competitors, you may hand an advantage to your competitors. So there's this constant battle between should I spend the money, which might break the company. Yes. And often the way to do that is to try and take a risk with other people. And that's very difficult for agents to do. Do you think their marketing hair is good, bad, indifferent? Because, I mean, I go around the country and most of them just bang on about how wonderful they are with a list of bullet points. Is that the way forward? No, I think, I, I think there is a changing of the guard in terms of the consumer. I think as the consumer gets younger, they, they, they consume their information uh, in a different way. If you would turn around to one of my kids and say, well, you know, do you want the estate agent to come around and meet you this afternoon? They go, no, 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 just get them to send me a message or a WhatsApp or let's, let's do a FaceTime video when it makes sense. <laughs> you know, it's all changed. And, and I think from the, from the you know, the, the information um, age or the, the you know, the, the amount of technology around means that agents uh, need to change the way they service their customers. And I think that's a very, very big issue for them. Do you think there's a lot of estate agents out there that are stuck in their ways in terms of their backroom operations and the way they work? And, and if they could almost free themselves from some of that, they could use that time to go out and get more business? Well, I think they certainly need to look at it. Um, I mean, it's no coincidence that when Foxtons first came on the scene, they had a massive call centre in Chiswick, which serviced everybody who'd ever come into contact with Foxtons, and it was no surprise that they did so well. So, the, you know, most of the CRM systems that were set up for savings were just handled, were just set up to match buyers and sellers. Yes. The amount of data they captured was never... The, the systems were never designed to mine that data. So I think, yeah, the... Because that Foxton's call centre is, is world-beating. The, the, I, I think a lot of their business comes from the fact that they pick up the bloody phone and start talking to people. Well, it does, and it's, it's no coincidence. I mean, their, their software system, which, which is called BOSS, but it's nothing more, nothing more than a business operating system, uh, is world-class. So I think for people who want to utilise their data better, even in the post-GDPR scenario... That's where they need to be changing. And I think if they can free up 
frontline staff to be doing what they need to be doing, which is getting offers from people, um, you know, mining the database for new listings, um, and getting those deals to exchange. That's what you know. The efficiency we talked we talked earlier about the efficiencies. People need to be using their frontline staff much, much, much more efficiently if they want to survive. Because so maybe we can talk about it in the next video. Yeah, lovely. Thank you.